All right, hey everybody, and welcome back to another mod spotlight. Today we're going to be going over the clay soldiers mod. Basically, what this mod does is add little clay soldier guys that you can have battle and do a multitude of things, but they're very fun. And uh, so let's go. First thing you're going to want to do is go into a crafting table with a soul with a block of soul sand and some clay, and make some clay soldiers. This formula will make four, and when you right click on the ground it will allow them to come out and when you hit them after they've been uh, let out it will make them drop back into their clay form so you can replace them anywhere pretty cool now there are a variety of different types of clay soldiers uh, varying from blue to red all of the dyes uh, redstone coal melons and pumpkins and the way you make these is by taking the clay soldier and putting them in a crafting table with the uh, type of dye or redstone or coal and you can also make the pumpkin and melon soldiers by putting them in this formula around a pumpkin or a melon now say you get a bunch of red soldiers and you're like man I need some more soldiers to just put on the blue team well if you want to turn them back into uh, clay soldiers regular clay soldiers you can put them in a crafting table with a water bucket and that can be up to eight people that you can just bring back to regular pretty cheap and it's good now there are five different mounts that these guys can ride, and they will ride them as long as they are spawned. They'll go straight for them and just hop on. The original one was horses, and there's a bunch of different types of horses. This is a dirt horse, and all you have to do is get a piece of soul sand and put it next to two, uh, four dirt, two on each side, and it will make two dirt, dirt horses. There are also uh, uh, Pegasus, or Pegasi, Pegasi, I don't know. I have no clue how to say that plural, but they're the same formula as horses, but with a feather and they can fly. So, regular horses just do regular walk around. They're faster. They give you pretty much give your guy more health cuz they also have their own health and they take some of the damage. Uh Pegasus can be flown and do, have the same function as the horse. Uh red bun uh, bunnies, not red bunnies, but bunnies are uh they can jump as high as the player and they're good for avoiding melee attacks. So you can make them with this formula with soul sand and a type of wool on both sides. And then there's also turtles, which can swim. And all of them, except for the melon and pumpkin variety, I believe, are fireproof. So they can swim, so if your guy is going through water, he won't just sink to the bottom. He'll be able to float if he's riding on one of these guys, which is very useful. Now, there's one other called the gecko. And the gecko can climb on surfaces. You can make him with different types of saplings. There's a whole bunch of different combinations. Uh, but this is the formula for making the gecko. And if you want to find out how to make all the other ones, you can check out the forms. I'll leave a link in the description. So, there's also a few other recipes that you might want to know about. First being the clay disruptor. Now this thing will allow you to make all of the mobs that you spawn come back. Like, they'll go back into their clay form. So if you have a bunch of clay soldiers running around and you right click with this thing it'll turn them all into their clay soldiers for uh, their pick upable forms that is so you can just go around and pick them up now clay cookies are another thing entirely they're not really useful they're more just for rewarding your soldiers if they win they're like crack to the soldiers they they swarm these things so they're pretty cool but they don't really uh, serve any purpose other than to just be a fun item and you can make them with this recipe and lastly, there is the Nexus. The Nexus is my favorite thing about this mod. I'm not really going to go into detail right now because I'll be explaining it more later. But you can create it by using obsidian, soul sand, uh, two clay, and a diamond. It's kind of it's slightly expensive, not really, but uh, it's well worth it because it makes endless battles. You can do whatever you want, and you don't have to waste materials. So, all of these guys. Once they turn into different colors, they will automatically go after any other color of Clay Soldier. Now, there's a bunch of different things you can give your Clay Soldier just to give them a bonus in battle. These are all of the things, and it's very extensive. But first, we're going to go over their building abilities. If you give one Clay Soldier uh, five wood blocks, and you have to drop the whole stack, if you give them five, they will make a mini hut. And then if you give them 10, they will make a slightly larger hut. And if you give them 20, they will make a castle, which is pretty cool. And the castle has a chest with sticks inside of it. All really cool. And clay soldiers can also go into chests and minecarts with chests in them and take out items. 
these items to be specific. So let's go over these. It's quite a bit here. The stick is the main weapon of all clay soldiers. When you drop this, they'll take it, and they do more, they do more damage than just punching with their fists. If you give them a flint, when they have one of these sticks, they will sharpen it, and it will do even more damage than it did before. If you give them a blaze rod, it's like a sword, but it does fire damage. So it'll set you guys on fire, and when a clay soldier dies of fire damage, he'll turn into a uh, clay brick, like a brick guy. So right now, there is a way to, uh, to bring him back, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But let's keep going here. The shear blade can be ma made by putting a pair of shears in the crafting table, and it will give you two half shears. So it's pretty much breaking the shear in half and using it as a weapon. What this does is it allows your uh, your clay soldier to dual wield. So say your clay soldier has a stick or a blaze rod in one hand and you give him shear, he will be able to hold the shear in the other hand. You can't dual wield two blaze rod or, or two sticks, but you can actually have a shear in both hands or just a shear in one hand and another weapon in the other. This is really cool. They don't do as much damage as a sword, because you can dual wield them, but they're very useful for melee attackers. Leather is a form of armor. If you give a clay soldier leather, he will have armor that will protect him from attacks. If you put wool down when he has that armor, he will reinforce it and make better armor. Iron ingots will reinforce the skeletal structure of the clay soldier, make him hit when he hits uh, other clay soldiers, it will knock him back, and he will be resistant to knockback. The downside of this, though, is he can no longer ride any of the uh, any of the mounts. So you're going to want to use this with caution because the mounts are very useful. Another cool thing that you can give your clay soldier is the diamond. The diamond will make your clay soldier into an ultimate soldier. And these guys are really hard to kill, so, you know, it's well worth it to give one of you guys a diamond. Another thing you can give them is a bowl, which can be used as a shield. And it will protect from ranged attacks, and I think it'll also provide a little bit more armor against melee attacks. To reinforce this shield, you can drop a block of iron, and they will add iron studs to the uh, shield and that will help them even more in blocking ranged attacks. If you give your clay soldier paper, he'll just make a cool little cape. It doesn't really do anything, just gives him a cape. If you give him a lily pad, similar to the turtles, it'll make him float. So lily pads are kind of useful for water. As opposed to that, feathers are useful for falling down very high distances because when you have a feather on, your clay soldier will float. Bricks will cause your clay soldiers to stand still, which is kind of useless if you have melee weapons, but if you have ranged weapons, it's very useful. Speaking of ranged weapons, gravel. If you drop gravel, your clay soldier will be able to throw projectiles at other clay soldiers uh, from a distance. So that combined with the brick will pretty much create a sentry. There's a few other ranged projectiles, including fire charges, which when thrown cause fire damage, obviously. Snowballs are similar to fire charges, except they don't uh, they don't cause any damage. They just cause the other uh, the other clay soldiers to be knocked back, unless they have, of course, an iron ingot as a skeletal structure. Sugar canes are pretty useful. They uh, they make your character, your clay soldier, have better accuracy. Blaze powder will cause uh, other clay soldiers. The instance they are hit when your clay soldier has a blaze powder. It will cause them to turn into clay bricks, just like the clay, uh, not the clay, but the uh, blaze rod will cause. Coal will cause any fire damage that your character inflicts to be more intense. So if you have coal and you have fire charges or blaze rods, then it will do more damage. Now, you're wondering, how do I fix all of these guys once they turn into these clay bricks? Well, if your, character, if your clay mod, uh, clay soldier that is, if your clay soldier has a gas tier, you will be able to turn any clay uh, clay soldier that has turned into a brick into their color. So say I have a blue guy, and he gets killed by a blaze rod, and he turns into a brick. Well, if a green guy comes along and gives him a gas tier, it will turn him into a green character. So that's pretty cool. That's a way to increase your numbers if you're using fire weapons. Now, gunpowder will allow your character to, to, once he dies, he will cause an explosion. This can hurt you guys, so be careful with that. Magma Cream is entirely different. When you're using magma, magma Cream, 
if you give your clay soldier this, they will do critical hit damage randomly uh, against other mobs, and when they die, the magma cream will become attached to another uh, another mob, whichever one killed them, that is, and it will cause them to explode later. String will protect clay soldiers from explosions. Eggs will cause them to be invisible to other clay soldiers, but you can see those that have been uh, disguised with the egg if you give them gla uh, glass, which will cause them to have glasses. And it will also let them see longer distances, so if you want your clay soldiers to see each other from quite the distance, you can give them a glass. Uh, a red and white mushroom will be used as poison. The way this works is if your character has this and attacks a uh, another clay soldier, it will give them the other clay soldier one more attack before it dies. So you can use that twice. So if you give a clay soldier a red mushroom, he will have two attacks with it, which will cause pretty much two soldiers to die, unless he uses it on the same one, which would be kind of foolhardy. Slime balls are pretty cool. They cause other clay soldiers to be stuck in place. Clay can be used to revive your clay soldiers if they die, unless they are bricks, of course. And then sugar will increase your clay soldier's speed. Ender pearls are pretty cool. They cause any clay soldier that takes an ender pearl to become kind of a zombie, which means when they kill another clay soldier, that clay soldier will also become a zombie. When they are killed, they will be dropped as their respective original color, but zombie clay soldiers cannot tell the difference between one another, so if you have a blue clay soldier and a yellow clay soldier, they both become zombies, they won't attack each other, they'll attack whatever other thing they can find. So, to protect you guys against this, you can give them seeds, which will protect them from becoming zombies. Redstone will be used as blinding powder. Glowstone will cause you guys to glow uh, during the night. Uh, raw pork chops and mushrooms are used as food to heal your care, uh, to heal your clay soldiers during battle. You can give glistering melon to one of your clay soldiers, so he can become a healer, and that can be used up to four times. But he can't uh, he can't have a weapon when he has glistering melon. If you use wheat, it will cause the behavior of your clay soldier to become more of a villager stance to where they won't really fight. Another war will be will turn them into a warrior, which means they will fight. Uh, and then fermented spider eye will give them a neutral behavior, which will stop them from, you know, attacking unless already provoked. Kind of like spiders. Milk will erase all the effects of wheat, nether wart, and fermented spider eye, so they can just go back to normal. And then lastly, the gold nugget makes one, uh, one of the clay soldiers of any color become a king. So if you drop one of these, they'll become the king, and the other clay soldiers will gather around and defend it. The king is the only clay soldier that can carry the bone, which is better than a sword. But... With only those two, your clay soldier might be a little weak as the king, and you don't want your king to die. So if you want your king to be more improved, you can give him a block of gold. A block of gold will make his weapon better, as well as his armor. So, that's all the stuff that you can use in a battle. What I'm going to do now is go... Let's make it daytime. That's a quite a while. Time set zero. What I'm going to do is kind of explain the clay nexus here. So what the clay nexus does is when you right click it, as you can see there's a soldier spawner and a, uh, mount, sp a mount spawner. So you can put, the mounts aren't really color specific so you can put whatever color you want in there. You put the type of soldier you want it to spawn and the items you want it to spawn with into there. And when you apply a redstone signal to it, it will cause your clay soldiers to spawn in groups of five. Now when these clay soldiers die, they won't drop anything and they won't they won't become uh, pieces of clay, but they will spawn infinitely and you won't have to use extra clay soldiers. Which is pretty cool for what I've got set up here. As you can see, I've got two sides, red versus blue, and I have equipped them with different things. The blue soldiers have a speed boost, but they don't have any horses, so they also have iron ingots to increase their skeletal structure, some coal to make their fire damage do more, and fire charges for range. And they also have uh, blaze rods, redstone for uh, blinding powder, shields, and slime balls with sugar. So that's more of the passive 
class right there. This over here for the red, they have horses as well as gas tiers because the other side has fire weapons. And they can dual wield with a sheer blade or a stick. And I also put a piece of flint in here. I'm not sure if they can sharpen through that, but I might as well put that in there. And then the other side also has a horse, blinding powder, a slime ball, a shield, and a stick. So, without further ado, let's see how this works. The way it works, actually, is they spawn, and when they get to another clay soldier's uh, uh, nexus, they will attack it and cease it from uh, spawning anymore. So, whichever side wins will be the side that... Oh, crap. Get rid of you guys. We don't need you. Alright, didn't take anything. Good. Okay. So, once they attack the nexus, they will cease spawning, and one side will win. So, what are we going to do here? Let's get a redstone, torch, and start the battle. Let's go. Here we go. Takes a few seconds to start. There we go. The battle is on. The cool thing you can do is if you get to a soldier and you right click him. Let me see. Got a soldier here. There we are. You can watch them battle. And if you left click, you can hit them and they will die. So, let's watch. Let's watch this guy fight. I don't know what he's attacking. He's attacking some dude in the corner. Did the Reds win? Jeez. <laughs> I couldn't get away from him. Alright, so... Looks like the Reds have won. Good job, Reds. That is pretty cool. As you can see, the blue nexuses have stopped producing. That guy is actively attacking this nexus. But that's about it for this mod. If you enjoyed watching, please remember to like and subscribe. And uh, I will see you guys later. Peace.